Hello again, witches, secrets, and friends, and welcome to the Fat Brain Switch Podcast, the show where we do a little ranting, raving, and walk waving. I'm your host, Paige, and together we're going to explore magic and spirituality, social justice, the psychic realm, and most importantly, how we work. Hello again, witches, and thank you for tuning in to episode 52, Witch You Better Work. And yes, that is a reference to RuPaul in the 90s, and I'm hoping some of you are old enough to get that. (laughs) The idea for this episode was actually suggested by a listener named Ariadne who messaged me asking about workplace magic. And I'm so glad you did that, Ariadne, because I actually have like a lot of sources of this. I, You know, I'm a witch at work, so I've been, you know, perfecting rituals and stuff for quite some time. So today I am talking about workplace witchery, magic you can do uh, and that can help you at work. So things that help keep the peace with coworkers, things that help you speak confidently to your employers or in meetings, ways to attract clientele or to draw attention to yourself and to your work. And of course, how to create sacred space in your office or at your desk. Finally, I have some tools at the very end of the episode for those of you who also work in a witchy or magical industry. So if you're a tarot reader or a psychic, or maybe you host a witchy podcast, (laughs) I have some specific tools that I've been using to help give my work a magical boost and to help keep me healthy psychically. So recently I talked about money and about feeling confident about getting what you want and placing value on yourself and your works. That was episode 48, uh, which better have my money. Was that it? No, it was fuck witches get money. I debated both. (laughs) So now that you know that you are a badass who deserves to have the money that you need to live a good life, we are going to talk about some practical ways you can actually use magic to continue to pump good and prosperous energy into your career or your work life. You've used magic to attract money or to get that job. Now it's time to keep it going. Since we are right into Virgo season and have a Virgo new moon early tomorrow morning, and since like a million other planets are in Virgo, like I'm pretty sure Venus and Mars and Mercury are all also in Virgo, this is a really great time to focus on work and success. So let's start where lots of magical work begins, creating sacred space or in this case, creating sacred office space, (laughs) which makes me giggle. Uh, (laughs) So for people who don't work in a witchy environment, coming into work and, you know, burning a giant bundle of sage and ringing some bells and lighting candles and setting up a crystal grid or what have you on your desk just might not go over so well. For some of you, that's okay. For some people, it's not especially if this is a brand new job where they don't really know you and you don't really know them. Instead, you can take a way more subtle approach to cleansing up your workspace and to setting up some space where you can be magically connected. This is a time to work with magical washes, waters, and sprays, all of which I truly love, adore, and recommend all the time. So start by clearing items off your desk or your walls. You know, clear everything out. If this is a new job, clear out everything that was left there by the previous occupant at your desk or your office. If you find things in the break room that belong to an old employee that no longer works there, talk to your boss about getting rid of them or giving them away or what have you. Basically, you want to clear out old energy to make room for you and your energy and your work. So... Get rid of everything that doesn't fit with your goals or your visions of success. You know, some you can just put away, some you have to get rid of completely. Keep only the necessities that you really need for this job or things that make you happy and already get you in the right frame of mind for working. Like, I will never tell you to trash, you know, your treasure troll doll collection that makes you smile like a doofus because I love stuff like that. I have stuff on my desk that is probably not super conducive to a work environment, like my fish tank. (laughs) My little guy, my little beta, he is in his fish tank. He's right behind my laptop and I love having him there. I think he brings a fun little energy. So if you can get a fish, that's cool, but just remember it needs to be a whole big tank, not just a bowl. They don't actually like that. (laughs) I happen to have the space, so I'm lucky. 
Do the same with the drawers or under the desk or, you know, just anywhere. Clear out anything you don't need. Stuff that distracts you from your work or that makes you feel sad or that makes you feel angry or that makes you feel like you don't belong there. Throw out any trash. Get rid of dirt. You know, if you have a dead plant on your desk, get rid of that right away. That's bad news. Now we can clear the psychic energy that remains with the space and add in some energy that's way more conducive to your job or to whatever you want to accomplish or attract at work. This is when your magical washes, waters, and sprays come in. You can use a white sage spray just like you would with the plant. Spray it directly on the surface of your office and also the air around you and your personal aura space. That is if the scent is okay with the people around you. If you work in a scent-free environment, that's okay. There's tons of stuff you can do that has no smell. Always take the feelings of your coworkers and your bosses or whatever into account when you're doing stuff like this into the office. It needs to be a cohesive environment, right? It's a team. And that's not going to happen if everyone hates you. (laughs) Or if you hate, you know, some other person. If someone is always, always, always making some really distracting smell or playing a radio really loud, you know, that sets everyone off. So, you know, be conscientious of the other people around you. Florida water is a really, really powerful cleanser. This is this is a perfumey type water, not just straight water. And it has a really nice spicy citrus spe- smell. It is great for clearing out anything, clearing out spirits, clearing out negative energy, uh, creating a protective barrier. All of that kind of stuff can be done with Florida water. You can spray it around or put it on a cloth and wipe everything down. And you can wipe your windows or doors or glass with the Florida water. I definitely have washed my windows with a vinegar and water and Florida water solution for protection and privacy, and it really made a difference in the energy around my space. You can also clean doorknobs and door frames if you have a door or, you know, an area where people, a threshold, somewhere people pass through to come into your space, and that will help clear incoming energy, um, you know, before it even gets in there. If you do work in a scent-free environment or you just want something a little bit more low-key, salt water is your friend. You can buy, of course, salt water in a spray bottle uh, or you can make it yourself. You can use moon water that's been blessed under a full or new moon in a sign like, I don't know, Virgo, hint, hint. (laughs) And you can also do the same with salt. You can consecrate that salt, you can bless that salt, or you can, you know, infuse that salt with your intention before you mix it with your water. And while you're doing that, of course, you want to imagine yourself clearing away not only the physical debris, but energetic funk as well, because it's always there, right? If you have a large office, or you work someplace with really high shelves or bookcases or something like that, you can grab a long handled duster, just, you know, the fuzzy kind, and gently spritz it with your solution or your oil or your salt water. And use that to sweep energy away from hard to reach places. You don't want to soak the thing, right? Don't wreck your stuff. But this is a really great way to push away stagnant energy that you just can't reach. The ones with the extendable handle are the bomb. I do this with bookcases and books, especially. I I dust off the books because you don't want them. You don't want them to feel unused, right? Books can be a little bit dusty, but if you have dust growing, it's time to get rid of that. It's a sign that the air around there is not moving. And if the air is not moving, neither is the energy. So your spritzed saltwater duster is a great way to get in all those, you know, nooks and crannies and stuff. If mercury retrograde is approaching, or if you're right in the thick of it and totally struggling, uh, you can do all of this stuff with specific cleaners and oils to help smooth out the chaotic energy or to reverse the effects of mercury retrograde. Uh, My favorite are Van Van Oil and Chinese Wash. These are both a lemongrass and citronella situation. Lemongrass and citronella are associated with mercury, with communication, with clearing out and removing blocks and obstacles. So it's extra potent around mercury retrograde. If you can burn incense, I find burning those really helps calm down the electronics and things get a little bit wacky. Um, I love a little like a citronella or a lemongrass incense in the office. Um, And it really makes the energy a lot more calm. But of course, you might not be able to burn incense and that's okay. 
You can use the oils and the washes to help wash everything down. Since they smell like lemon and clean, it shouldn't be a smell that negatively affects your other employees. So Van Van Oil and Chinese Wash are both hoodoo staples, and they have a lot of uses when it comes to magic involving anything to do with work, unblocking, success, protection, communication, like I said. And so I always have some here in my office. I have a bottle of Van Van Oil right here next to me. My favorite Van Van oils are from Beau Magique here in Canada and Lucky Mojo in the U.S. And they both also sell a Chinese wash that they create using their Van Van oil. So I'll be sure to put links in the description for you guys. I've used both. They both work really, really great. And they both smell fantastic. <laughs> smell great. I like the clean smell of lemon. I think it's energizing. It opens up your mind. It's very clarifying. So I think it's an awesome scent and energy to bring into the office. So now that your office space is a little more sacred, it's cleaned, it's cleansed, and it's it's time to go. It's time to work. It's time to start introducing magical energy to the space to help you accomplish your specific goals or to work at your job specifically. The idea here is basically to turn your desk or your workspace into a subtle but workable altar space. So depending on where you work, like I said, you may have to be more subtle about it. But if you work in a place where you can let your freak flag fly and just put whatever you want on your desk or in your space, I say go for it. Go for it. To decide what kinds of things you want to put on your work altar, Think of the one you have at home or altars that you've admired before for some clues about what kinds of things bring up magical energy for you. So for me, on my altar, I have crystals, I have living plants and dried herbs, but always plants. I have magical waters, I have candles, I have coins from around the world, magical coins that I use. I also have photographs and symbols and icons. Some of those are statuary and some of those are candle or um not candles, but cards and pictures. Some of those things change all the time and some are constantly on there. So use that as inspiration when you're deciding what to bring to your altar at work. Um, but we'll add a little bit more of a prosperity and success vibe to all of that stuff. You can choose things that will be visible and that will be on top of your area for all your coworkers to see. And you can also choose some that are invisible. Everything you choose can be totally invisible or incognito if you like. One thing that I need to have near or on my desk is at least one living plant. I love having a living and growing plant in my workspace. To me, it is, you know, it's growth, it's creativity, it's creation, and it's that earth element. It really makes me feel more productive and I really need to be able to kind of like reach out and touch my plants, touch a little bit of earth, right? I spend so much time inside. We all do. You know, we, some of us never get out in the sun because of our work schedules. So having a living plant nearby really helps me feel that earth connection. But if you can't have a living plant, trying to set up near an office or take time to spend time with plants or nature throughout your workday can have a si similar effect. So I have a lot of plants near my desk right now. You know, I have my jasmine plant, which I'm currently manhandling. I like to rub the leaves. I like to smell the flowers. I love it. It's wonderful. I like to interact with it all the time. With my basil plant, I mean, I will just stick my face right in there and take a big old whiff. Uh, sometimes I'll stick my hands in the dirt to just kind of feel that, that grounding connection. Now, neither of these plants are something I would recommend at a desk if you don't have a lot of space. Both of these can really grow wild. Jasmine is a big plant that needs a big pot. Basil can grow in a smaller pot, but it will just keep growing, y'all. It gets bushy. So neither of those are something I would put on your desk or in your office if you have a small space. They also produce a lot of smells. And if you work in a scent-free environment, bringing a jasmine plant in would not be nice because it is a very strong, beautiful, but strong smell. 
So what you want to do is stick with something kind of small, a little more subtle that won't overgrow your workspace, right? But that also has magical properties to support your work or your goals or work in general. A common desk plant is uh, lucky bamboo. And with good reason, not only is it beautiful, <laughs> I love bamboo. I have a humongous bush of bamboo outside in the garden and I love sitting under it and it's full of grasshoppers all summer and it's just like so magical surrounded by the bamboo. And that's because bamboo is magical. It attracts luck and prosperity and it also breaks hexes and offers spiritual protection. It's also really great for increasing your mental power, you know, intellect, um, idea work, communication again, and it also helps you and encourages you to use your talents and to use them wisely. So this is a really, really great uh, kind of multi-purpose desk plant for magical work, right? Cacti is another one that a lot of people have in their office. And usually it's because people think that they're impossible to kill. But let me tell you, that is not the case. <laughs> not the case. You can kill a cactus. You shouldn't, but you can. <laughs> There's also the difference between living and thriving when it comes to cacti. If your area is warm and gets a lot of sun, a cactus can be an awesome plant to have on your desk for protection. So if you work in a very competitive job where you need to come out on top or where you might be the subject to sabotage or where you want to um, make yourself a little bit stronger or more powerful in your position, the cactus is great for that. Those needles, not only do they send out energy, right? They're radiating out. So it radiates out energy that's very protective, that is very tough, and that can help you get ahead. Great for competition. If you have a more humid environment and want a cactus, you can bring in a Christmas cactus, which is a little bit different. It has that same kind of hearty cactus vibe that is very protective, but it also has very loving and creative energy because of these gorgeous pink flowers that it gets on the end of its tendrils. That one does need a little more water than other varieties. It's more of a humid weather cactus, which sounds odd, but it exists. <laughs> so if you have something kind of common, something spiky, like a barrel cactus, which is what I have, and your barrel cactus gets enough sun and enough dry ass dirt, and it gets really, really happy, and it starts to bloom, oh boy, are you in for a treat. You usually only get one day with this flower, like a 24-hour span, and it actually blooms at night. So if you work at a job at nighttime, you're at your desk at nighttime, this might be a really good plant for you as long as it gets light during the day, right? But the smell of that flower is the most intoxicating and attractive smell I have ever smelled in my entire life. It is beautiful. And this is a great burst of energy to send out in your workspace, to have radiating around your workspace. And because they bloom at night and only for a short time, a lot of times it won't become a problem at work if the flower opens up. Great, right? Aloe also has a protective energy. You know, it's very sharp. You got the spears, but it also brings in good luck and prosperity. Of course, it's aloe. It's associated with healing and with skin care. So if you work in the health or the beauty industry, this is a really, really great desktop plant ally. It can help you connect to the healing energy. It can help you heal yourself and others. And it also helps bring up, and it also helps us connect to our bodies, our bodies and bodies and physical bodies in general. Aloe is also an ingredient that is in a lot of spells to do with trust, both gaining the trust of others and making sure that you can trust those around you. So if you work in an office with a lot of people that you don't know very well, having an aloe in your space can help make trust more of a priority when you're communicating with them. Orchids are another popular plant for desks and they have a really, really cool energy if you can keep an orchid alive. Depending on who you ask, orchids are either incredibly easy or incredibly difficult to grow. Go figure. <laughs> That's the nature of orchids, right? They're mysterious. 
But if you can figure it out and if you can keep an orchid going, they are associated with sexual and creative energy. They're very much about creation and attraction and bringing up, um, you might have heard this energy referred to as kundalini energy, which is all about, again, sexuality and creation, creativity, art. So if you need to start getting noticed a little bit more at work, or if you work in any sort of business that has to do with sexuality, with art or creativity, with love, you know, maybe you're a professional matchmaker. (laughs) Uh, Any of those kind of areas, Orchid is a really great plant to bring in to help bring that energy into the space. If your goal really is money and prosperity, just kind of generally, and you want something a little bit different than these plants, consider a Rose of Jericho. Rose of Jericho is also called the resurrection plant. And this is a really powerful talisman. So this plant can dry up completely and it forms a little ball. It looks like a tumbleweed, right? With just some roots at the bottom. It's all completely dried up. But when you put that ball with its roots into water, it will come back to life. The plant will spread out, it will turn green, and it will start to grow again. It really is super incredible. Again, I'll put a link in the description for a Rose of Jericho spell. It's a video by Madame Pamita on YouTube, and her spell, the way she puts it together, is really, really great for a desktop. It's it's what I use to put my Rose of Jericho on my desk. So all you need for this plant is, first of all, you need the plant, (laughs) and you need a shallow cup or a bowl with enough water just to cover the roots. You don't really want to soak the plant, although you can also grow this plant totally in full water, but I like to have it out a little bit. Um, What's cool is you can customize this, and you can customize this plant and this spell in ways that are not necessarily noticeable by the people around you immediately. So you can use your magical waters into inside the water of your Rose of Jericho. You don't want to put too much. You still want it to have regular water, of course, but you can make moon water. So that Virgo moon water would be really great in your Rose of Jericho to help grow your success and your prosperity and your commitment to your job. Virgo is a very like committed sign, right? You can add talismans to the water. So like crystals or coins. And if you're bowl or cup is not see-through at all, you can add whatever you want in there. People won't really be able to see it. It will be hidden by the plant. So you can use crystals or coins that are specific to your industry or that just attract money in general. So your Rose of Jericho is great for attracting money, but it's also because it is the resurrection plant. It's great for starting over in a new career or in a new office or reviving a career that you thought might have been on its way out. This next plant, or should I say herb or spice, is not one that you would grow at your desk, but one that you use while dried, and that's cloves. Yes, the cloves that are straight up in your spice cabinet. Uh, Likewise, in chai tea, which I know is chai means tea, but cloves are in chai. (laughs) Cloves are the best herb for stopping gossip about you to keep those who are jealous or who talk bad about you away from you or just out of your business. And it will also help you stay off the gossip train. Drama is lovely and it's tempting and it's so much fun sometimes, but it's really not good. And drama at work is especially bad. You can get clove oil or incense if you're allowed to burn it. You can keep a small sachet of dried clove at your desk or wear a perfume that has clove notes into it. You can also, again, grab yourself some chai and use that tea as a gossip stopping potion. You can drink the tea or you can make it for somebody else. You can even just put the tea bags and kind of infuse that in the tea bags and put that in the break room. It's not going to hurt anybody. Gossiping is not good. (laughs) Um, So bring a little bit of quietness to the whole office that way. Uh, You can put it into a mojo bag. You can use black, green, or even purple fabric. And you can put other things in there like a protective crystal or other protective herbs, a petition paper, or something from your office or from the person that is talking about you. 
You can write the name of the person that's talking shit about you on a piece of paper and put that in the bag, but you want to cross out the name with at least one big black X. You can also write that name, put a little bit of clove oil or clove dust on the paper and flush it down the toilet. That's one of my faves. Cloves can also be used in spells and rituals to discover the source of gossip and to get to the truth. So carrying it with you is pretty much good every day of the week. So again, using a clove base perfume, Florida water has clove in it, or carrying a little bag with clove in it is great at work to help you communicate more effectively with your coworkers or employers. When it comes to crystals, it's a lot easier than you think to have magical crystals at your desk these days to help clear away and attract certain types of energy. Uh, in almost every office now, you can find Himalayan salt lamps or even those made with agate or selenite. And they come in all shapes and sizes and some of them, you know, they connect to your USB port. It's super fun. I love these. And these have become so commonplace that you can have this incredibly humongous, first of all, chunk of magical crystal or rock at your desk and none's the wiser it's just a pretty piece right so selenite is great for keeping the energy in your space clear and clean and the stone never needs clean cleansing itself it is a very it's it's a cleaning kind of stone agate lamps and slices you can get decorative agate slices these are amazing and there are so many different varieties of agate that there are a million different uses all across the board. When it comes to lamps, I usually see them in tones like purple or green or blue or even like hot pink. Purple agate is really, really great for mastery, magic, and meditation. It's the color of royalty and it's associated with our upper chakras. For me, working in a magical business, I do have a big chunk of purple agate that I like to use whenever I'm meditating, especially when I'm reading for others, because it helps keep you calm and also helps keep you psychically connected and it helps keep other people calm as well. Blue, any sort of blue variety of agate, blue is the color of communication. So if you do a lot of talking with other people in your job or you work even right in the communications industry, if you have a podcast, if you are on the news, if you are a radio DJ, the blue agate can help you tap into that communicative energy, help you work with all of that sort of mercurial energy, and it can help clear and activate your throat chakra, which is your chakra that not only is about, you know, speaking, but also about expressing yourself honestly and truthfully. It's about authenticity. And that's very important, especially I find that authenticity is becoming more and more important in business. People are looking for authentic, authentically made items, uh, authentic businesses. They don't really want a company that is mainly concerned with pulling the wool over their eyes. So Blue Agate is really great for that. Green is, of course, the color of money. It attracts money and prosperity. It's also great for healing. So again, if you are in the healing or health industry, green is a great color there. Hot pink, it attracts love, sexuality, and pink is a color that opens your heart and makes you feel good. If you work in a business where your heart is like one of your main tools, if you work in charity or in any sort of compassionate industry, a pink agate lamp can really help you, you know, tap into that loving energy, can help you from getting frustrated with people that you're trying to help or from feeling helping people can be difficult, not because of the people that you're helping sometimes, but because in general, our world, our society makes helping others kind of hard. It can also be hard to see people in various states of sorrow or disarray, right? So pink agate is really great for that. If you want to keep it, you know, super simple, clear quartz. This is your ultimate multi-purpose crystal, and it can be used or programmed for any type of work at all. It's also really great for amplifying the energy that you put out there and cleansing space. You can get a really large piece. You can even get like a geode or a piece of natural rock that has quartz growing in it for pretty cheap. And these have become a pretty common desk decoration. So it won't raise any alarms. It's a really nice 
cool rock. If you have a great story about where it came from, that's even better. I have a big piece of Rocky Mountain rock that has natural quartz growing in it. And that is something I would definitely, if it was smaller, put on, put on my desk um, at a job where I'm not sure if people are receptive to crystals. But clear quartz is infinitely useful, infinitely useful. That is one that I recommend in every kind of space. One that I personally always, always keep on my desk, always, is pyrite. Sometimes it's called fool's gold, but despite the name, it attracts lots of luck and prosperity, and it's a very creative crystal to work with. It's very different, creative, and a little bit chaotic. You know, I like to think that it really hypes me up. It's also my favorite, my ultimate ally during Mercury Retrograde. Pyrite really, really helps bounce away some of that chaotic energy of Mercury retrograde and bring a little bit more focus without blocking out the creativity. So I'll take my big old chunk of pyrite and I will stick it right on my computer when it's acting up during Mercury retrograde and I will walk away for a while and I will just let that big chunk of almost gold metal do its thing. Fantastic. You can get smaller pieces of pyrite that you can keep anywhere in your desk or in your pocket for the same kind of uses. More stones that you could try if you want to bring more vibrant energy into the office are carnelian and citrine. Carnelian is another one get, that gets people all fired up. It activates creativity and passion and drive, and it's very attractive, and it attracts people to your creativity and your passion and your drive. Citrine is a little bit more low key, but it's sunny, it's vibrant, it's joyful, and it's upbeat. It's also really great for attracting money and good luck specifically. Like I was saying, you don't need to get big old chunks or big statement pieces, and you can even keep small tumbled stones, you know, in a nice little bowl on top of your desk, or even in the drawers if you don't want anybody to see them. You can create witch bottles featuring some of the plants and stones and keep those in your desk drawer. You can get small bottles at dollar stores or craft stores and fill those up. You can use dried basil and bay leaves, again, from your spice cabinet to attract a lot of wealth and prosperity. You can write wishes or goals directly onto the bay leaves and stash them, put them in your cash drawer, your safe, your wallet, the bottle, wherever. Cloves can also be put into a witch bottle with other things like with cloves, it's more of a protective vibe. So I would put salt, maybe even black salt, but salt, cloves. And if you can fit something like a coffin nail or a pin or a needle, I would also put that in there and stick it into your desk. If you can put it in a place where the person gossiping can find it, maybe you could do that. But if it's got sharp pointy things, you're not going to want to, because if they figure out it's you, that will be bad. <laughs> bad. <laughs> From there, you can bring in other talismans to attract success and to fill your office with that entire vibe. So special or magical coins can be stashed in drawers. For example, let's say you want to do a lot of business with a particular country, or you want to travel to that country, or you want to connect with items from that country. Having some coins or money from that country into a place of attraction in your office is really, really great for that. It adds that it brings in both the money vibe and the specific place vibe, right? I like to stick small stones that work for different things in all sorts of places. So I have a communication stone at the bottom of my my cup for my pens, right? I have a stone that is very good for focus and for bringing in money in my drawer where I keep my financial records. And I have, what else do I have? Here? Well, I have a million crystals on my desk, right? But I also have talismans and photographs and pictures. I have a coloring page from a magical coloring book that is a send cash spell and <laughs> all sorts of different stuff like that. You can also bring in photos and artwork and tarot cards. Tarot cards are so great, right? And you can find a tarot card that isn't super suspicious, or you can also stick it underneath your keyboard or your computer, stick it into your desk, your drawers. It can be a card that you pulled that morning, or it can be a card that is specific to success or prosperity, like the Eight of Wands or the Ten of Cups. You know, the Eight of Wands is about movement and action and 
working hard and getting the things that you want. And the 10 of cups is about, you know, ultimate fulfillment and success. So you can bring those into work. Even if you have like a cubicle, you know, you can hang them up. Why not? That old ritual of framing your first ever dollar or your first check, that itself is a form of magic. So if you already do it, congrats. (laughs) You see that dollar or that check every day. And it reminds you that you are successful and that your work is valuable. And that's important at work. Sometimes we, you know, we forget that stuff. Like I mentioned in episode 48, sometimes we forget how truly valuable we and our gifts and talents are. Finally, you can dress for success. So let's say you work in a place, but you don't have your own space, like a locker or a desk or your own office. This is where dressing for success comes in. Now, I won't go all the way into this because I've mentioned it in a few episodes and I write about it on the website all the time. But dressing with intention and including magical elements in your outfits or your perfume or your makeup are a really great way to bring in and put out the kind of energy that will help you. Any of the herbs I mentioned before can be used in oil form or put on as a perfume. Uh, Florida oil, Florida water is technically a perfume, right? <laughs> um, you can get crystal jewelry that is really great for bringing in prosperity, like the ones I mentioned, or anything that's green, like emerald or aventurine. If you want a little bit more about dressing for success, uh, check out Magical Fashionista by Tess Whitehurst. And I also have a podcast episode called, I think it's Badass Old Witches and Magical Fashionistas, <laughs> to give you a little bit more of a background on that. That's honestly one of my favorites. I dress with intention every single day. It's one of my favorite, like, magical practices. That doesn't mean that you have to be into very trendy fashion or upscale fashion. It could mean, you know, I want to attract money today, so I'm going to dress in greens or other earthy tones that bring on that wealth vibe. I really want to go unnoticed today. I want to just go in there, keep my head down and get my work done. So I'm going to wear black and gray colors that kind of make me fade. If you want to get attention, you can wear glitter or stars or something that just draws energy to you. You can use stones like a sunstone to accentuate that. Gold stone is a great stone for attracting attention. This episode of the Fat Feminist Witch Podcast on workplace witchery was brought to you by a very special advertiser, and that is Creature Creations. Creature with a K, Creations with a C. Creature Creations makes one-of-a-kind art dolls, many that feature spooky, spiritual, or outright witchy motifs. And that's because they're all created by a real practicing witch. You can find dolls that appeal to your creativity and your sense of playfulness. You can also find some that could have a fantastic place on your altar, like Medusa, or the Gemini twins, or fairies, or spirits. She even has a non-binary doll that is decked out in all of the colors of the non-binary flag for all you NB witches out there. All the dolls are handmade, all are one of a kind, and unfortunately, Creature Creations is closing, but that means that all of the dolls are available, on sale, and are ready to go. So head to Creature Creations, Creature with a K, Creations with a C, dot com to see the full line of dolls that are available and maybe get yourself something a little bit different for your altar space. Now, a lot of this is going to help, but some of that won't do anything if you're surrounded by people who you can't communicate with effectively, or that are trying to dominate you, or that are just plain unpleasant. I mean, I'd like to say that every workplace is a beautiful and wonderful place to work, and everyone's happy to go to work every day, and happy that they make that money that can help them live their lives. But of course, that is so not the reality of our world. (laughs) 
And if you set up this beautiful desktop altar, you have this personal oasis. But as soon as that jerk in accounting comes over complaining or whatever, now you have this other type of energy introduced to your space. Having this stuff on your desk that can help absorb negativity and convert it like selenite is great for that. But sometimes the problem is with the people in general, and not just the other people. Sometimes it's you, but people can be an issue or an obstacle to overcome. So if the problem is just general communication, you can bring in plants or crystals or talismans that work with that. You can work with the planet Mercury or the god Mercury (laughs) and those types of energies. Wednesdays are the day that is sacred to Mercury and that are best for communication. So try scheduling meetings for Wednesdays and see if anything changes. Connect with the element of air to help bring in clarity and to let your words be carried to exactly where they need to go. I like to do this by meditating and feeling myself engulfed in this really beautiful cleansing breeze, like I'm at the top of a mountain and I'm feeling that air just rush around me and clear away everything. If you need to communicate more effectively with a boss or maybe get a raise, try Tuesdays or Thursdays for those kinds of meetings instead. Tuesday is sacred to Mars and associated with the element of fire and that same sexual and creative energy I mentioned with carnelian. Carnelian is a very Tuesday kind of um, crystal. So you can harness that energy. You can dress in matching colors like blacks and reds and bright oranges. You can... Be confident, be truthful, be competitive. That's a day to let that kind of stuff out because that's the energy that is already going around. Even if you are normally a little bit more soft-spoken, that is the day when you can really fight for yourself and fight for what you want. Thursdays are money day. Today's Thursday. They are very earthy and stable. They're associated with Jupiter and the god Thor. It's Thor's day, right? (laughs) So it's a great day for talking about or working towards bringing in money. So this is a good time to ask for a raise, especially right now that we're in Virgo season. Thursdays in Virgo season are an awesome time to ask for a raise. Likewise, Capricorn season and I don't think Taurus. Taurus is earthy, but they're a little bit different. (laughs) So if love, beauty, or sexuality are a part of your work, Fridays are a day of power for you. Sacred to Venus, both the planet and the goddess again. Friday is a great day for personal magnetism and anything associated with with Venus's concepts, right? This is a good day to bring people in. This is a good day to get notice, to be attractive. If if your work involves sexuality or love, like if you write about love or sex, try writing on Thursdays or maybe having your writing released on a Thursday to help work with that energy that's already out there. This is a really good day to attract people, to bring people in. And it's great to do work that attracts loyal and repeat customers or clients. Let's talk about that for a minute. Loyal customers and clients. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in asking for money in our magic or thinking of prosperity just in financial terms. But repeat business is really what keeps almost every business alive. That is the ticket right there. You think Weight Watchers would be as successful as it is if that shit actually worked and people didn't keep coming back? Of course not. (laughs) That's the scam, right? Now, that's a scam for them. But in general, customer loyalty is not a scam. It's incredibly important. Word of mouth is also one of the most effective types of advertising for your business, especially because it's mostly free. (laughs) Seriously, in my marketing class, we learned that most people, no matter what, still find out about smaller local businesses through word of mouth than they do by any other means. So, People don't always think about it this way. You know, we think of psychic people and non-psychic people. But all of us sense energy. All of us have that intuition, those gut feelings, or, you know, sometimes we feel icky or something's just not right. We all have that. That means all the people around you also have that ability, even if they're not aware. So you have to be careful about what energy you send out as a business owner or as someone working in a business. 
Be careful not to put out nothing but that money, money, money type energy. If you're constantly asking for money or all you want is money, all you care about is financial success, people will feel that. And so will you. It'll affect them and it will affect you. It will, fa- it will affect how they patronize your business and it will affect how you conduct business. It's not good. I, because I, I feel energy like that, I feel a slimy and kind of untrustworthy vibe from some stores or offices or people. And I don't just mean magical stores, you know. I've walked into places before, it's beautiful, it's eye-catching, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, great, look at that, I can't wait to go inside. And the second I walk in, I turn around and leave. I just get this feeling, like a bucket of slime was dumped on me, or like a bunch of gross old bankers just slobbered all over my body. Like, it's just, it's not a nice feeling. Now, this energy might bring in money, But it also turns away repeat business because it's just not a good vibe. It doesn't make people feel like they want to come back. So if you find yourself suddenly thinking that you need to raise all your prices, even though all of your prices are good, they're in line with competition, everything's moving well, people even compliment your prices. You have lots of people that come in all the time and buy similar things but you think you need to raise all of your prices to the detriment of a lot of your loyal customers, the energy in your place is off. A lot of people don't think about this. This is so wild. But, you know, work isn't just supposed to be about making money. It is about making money. We need money to survive. We need money to do the things that we love, to have the things that we love, to go the places that we want to. But money cannot be your only focus if you are trying to build a business or if you are trying to create a particular vibe in a business or any kind of workplace. That's why it's important not to focus so much on dollars and cents, but also on creating a welcoming and loving and attractive environment for customers. You want people to feel like your place is friendly or your voice is friendly, even if it's all over the phone. That's why working magic on Fridays or having something special that brings people in on Fridays can help you bring in prosperity without sacrificing the human element. All of this also goes for social media and advertising. Though, oh my god, you know what? As of this very second, social media magic is definitely a topic for a future show. (laughs) Because I have specific things I do there too. That would be too long. (laughs) So attraction is an entire topic of magic in itself, no matter what you're trying to attract. Venus is the planet of attraction in general, not just romance or sex or love. And the element associated with Venus often is water. But when it comes to attraction, the element you want to work more with is fire. Working with orange colors, stones, scents, candles, what have you, creates an attractive vibe. Orange is the color of success, attraction, victory. Orange candles are great for all of that and for casting any of your general success, victory, or attraction spells. I also use a recipe for an attraction oil from a Scott Cunningham book. I believe it's incenses, oils, and brews. It's gotta be. Um, But the ratio is five drops of patchouli per one drop of cinnamon oil, and you put it into a base oil like olive oil or jojoba. And This oil, and I hope you understand what I mean, it smells like the color orange, more of a deep, dark, um, like fall type orange, not like orange is the fruit, but like the vibe of a strong orange. I use it constantly. If you want to get noticed or you want to make a good impression at an interview or a meeting, you can put this on as perfume um, or even mix it into like some of your lotions or something. Another great oil mix for that specifically for making a good impression for interviews is one that's four drops of ylang ylang, three drops of lavender, and one drop of rose or rose geranium um, as your ratios and again in your carrier oil. So I used to use these oils all the time in the stores that I worked at and I still use them at home. In the stores I worked at, I would add a couple of drops to floor washes or to sprays, especially on slower days when people weren't coming in. Not enough to make the floor all oily or sticky or anything like that, just enough to infuse that energy with whatever I was doing. 
I also used to take a, a drop of that, that get noticed oil, the patchouli and cinnamon on my finger, and I would go around and touch, so mark items that were on sale or that I thought were really interesting or brand new or that people seem to be overlooking a lot. And I'm telling you, it worked all the time. Some shelves are, you know, they're just not in the perfect location. <laughs> some, there's, you know, a million usable spaces in your store, but some of those are not noticeable by customers. Using an oil like that can be a really, really great way to draw attention to a specific place in your store or to, you know, you can put it on your phone if you want people to call in. All sorts of ways to draw attention that way. I also had a super secret weapon at the witchy stores I used to work at for slow days. And it was, and I'm telling you, guaranteed to bring people in. And that is amber incense, not amber the stone, amber incense. The chunk of amber incense that you can get from Charme Sotiege is my favorite. And I will put a link again. But there's lots of great options for amber scent. You can get it in a perfume or an oil or a spray or an incense stick. But the trick is to have that amber smell wafting out of your store or office or anywhere where you want to bring people in. This is a physical thing. I honestly would put a little tiny chunk of that amber onto a burning charcoal disc, wait a few minutes, not even five, and open up the doors to let the smoke out. And people would just start wandering in off the street, asking about the smell or complimenting the smell, and they would always look around. It was guaranteed to bring people in on slow days, and we used it every time we needed it. We always had these big, chunky amber incenses available, and you only need a small amount on a charcoal disc to fill the place with this intoxicating and attractive smell. It's really, I highly recommend it. (laughs) It's also a lot of fun. There are also a couple of pre-made traditional recipes or spells or candles that you can get to increase your success and to attract customers. I really love the Motor City Hoodoo candles and oils from Coventry Creations. And you can also get them from other hoodoo suppliers like Lucky Mojo. Um, And two that have never, ever, ever let me down are Crown of Glory and Querent Collar. So Crown of Glory is earthy, and this is a great candle to light on your Thursday, to bring in financial success, to increase success. So anytime you are having an event, when you put out a new advertisement, when you are having a sale, that Crown of Glory will help increase that very successful energy and will help your money and finance grow. Querent collar is usually red and it smells a little bit more, it smells a little bit more romantic almost. So it's great for Fridays and to tap into that attraction magic um, that includes that human element. Like I said, neither of these have ever let me down. Now, if you, like me, need to attract customers, but don't have a physical location, you're not in a store or an office or what have you, you can totally use those candles or those oils to bring in success or attract people to you. That's almost great, better because you can do a full on big old ritual or candle spell right at your desk, right? And infuse that energy right into your workspace. You can also use your business cards. I love business cards. I actually just got new ones. So the the following spells are ones I have to do again. So one idea with business cards, and this is another one I got from Madame Pamita, is to use sachet powder. Sachet powder is, it's literal powder. Uh, It's infused with herbs, oils for specific purposes. You can put this into a little bag or a sachet uh, for sure. Or you can dust your business cards with them. So using attraction, like general attraction or a fast money sachet powder is the best. What she did in her video was sprinkle it all over the business cards right in the box, get them all covered up in the sachet powder, and then tap it off so the cards are not obviously powdery, right? While speaking your intentions, while telling the cards what you want them to do, give them their instructions, you know? Some of that smell might remain, but for the most part, the powder will be mostly undetectable by others, except psychically. They will feel it. That is 
so fun because you can leave those business cards at other places. You can hand them out directly or whatever. You can do whatever with business cards. You can send them out in the mail. There's just a hundred ways to use that. And that is a very, very simple spell. My favorite spell to do with business cards uh, uses candles because I love candles, right? So you use a prosperity candle, whatever kind you like. Um, you can dress it, you can put on the oils and the herbs, you can do whatever you normally do with that candle. So you dress it, you light it, maybe you want to write a petition paper, just focus on the kind of money or success that you want, the customers that you want to bring in, what you imagine for this business. You can think it, you can say it out loud to your candle, you can, you know, blurt it all out, you can write it on the back of the card, whatever. Once your candle has melted a bit and accumulated some, you know, liquid wax, put your card on a sheet of wax paper or a plate or something and start covering your card with the wax front and back. Make it super waxy. You might have to burn the candle a few, a few times to get the wax to completely cover the card and that's okay. Repeat your wishes and your intentions every time. Once your card is encrusted with this really great smelling and magical wax, right? Because you use a magic candle. You have a talisman for your altar or your desk, or you can put it with your other business cards. And this infuses your business card specifically with all of that energy. If you get new business cards, you should take the one that you've created and you can bury it in the ground, either in front of your home or near your office or work. Uh, And do it again with your brand new business card. Don't keep your old business card wrapped in the wax for a long time after you've stopped using it. You know what I mean? It's, you're not attracting people to that. You're attracting people to what you are doing now. You wouldn't be getting a new business card if some things had not changed. It's important, right? That brings us to those of you who work in some sort of magical field or maybe a magical place. Maybe you're a tarot reader or you work in a witchy shop or you write a blog or a podcast or, you know, whatever. There's tons of magical jobs out there. All of the above suggestions are really, really great. But there's another layer of energy involved in our work, and that's psychic energy. You can absolutely use up too much of your psychic energy and you can get sick or tired or just, you know, completely fucking cranky. Some psychics get headaches or they need to eat right after. Some don't want to eat because they get very nauseated or they need to go to sleep. I am a headache and dizzy spins psychic hangover kind of gal myself. Um, So that's something that you have to be wary of in this kind of business. You also want to keep away any kind of really icky or gross or dangerous energy or spirits that are that you may encounter through your business, right? And then, of course, there's the topic of improving your psychic work performance. Psychic skills are skills. They're skills that have to be developed and you have to continue to study and learn and train and practice. So I have a few crystals that I always keep near my workspace for these reasons and that I use a lot to help me in any sort of ritual that improves job performance, my job specifically. (laughs) So those are galaxyite, demortiorite, apophyllite, and lastly, a very new one, honey calcite. And I did not realize these all ended in the same sound. And now I think that's pretty cute. (laughs) So galaxyite is one of my absolute faves. Uh, You can find it on the fatfeministwitch.com. I believe I did a whole write-up about it. It's great for astrologers or for any of you that work with the cosmos, cosmic energy. It helps you gain greater insights into birth charts and while star scrying or observing space. It helps keep you calm and collected, and it's a great aura cleanser and healer. It heals and repairs holes and leaks in your aura and kind of helps keep other people's auras to themselves. <laughs> I have a palm stone and a wand on my desk. I will use the wand to help me in more when I'm really focusing on something cosmic or something to do with the stars or guidance from the stars. I will hold that wand in my hand or I will, I'll end up using it like a real wand and, and pointing things out or directing energy. The palm stone 
helps keep me very, very calm. Um, I find cosmic and space energy to be kind of an extension of earthy energy. And it's, it's an energy that I really, really enjoy. So it's one that helps me feel calm and collected and also very focused. Demorturite is dark blue and black. It's a great stone for psychic communication, for establishing boundaries and amplifying psychic energy, just kind of in general. It can lend helpful energy during a psychic hangover phase. It can help deal with a lot of those kind of psychic side effects and can help your clients or customers or maybe even yourself release pent up emotions in a way that is constructive and leads to healing. It's associated with Aquarius and Uranus, so it helps bring about change and transformation for the better. This is a good stone to keep right on a table if you're doing reading so that the person, the other person can touch it or can interact with it. Sometimes it can be hard to find. Uh, I can only get small pieces around here, but I keep it on my desk always. And whenever I'm doing any sort of reading or Reading for other people, even distance, long distance reading, I will grab that demorturite and keep it in my hand or with my work. Apophyllite. Oh, apophyllite is beautiful. This is a variety of quartz. So it's a variety of clear quartz, but it has these, this, it looks reflective, like a mirrored surface on top of quartz. It's so awesome. It's beautiful. Now, if you are a Reiki practitioner or someone who works in energy healing, you know all about apophyllite. This is your bread and butter, right? This is one that is great for making people feel calm and cool and safe. It helps speed up healing and helps us connect psychically. It activates your crown chakra and keeps it working as well as your heart chakra. It can help you connect to other beings like spirits, angels, fairies, you know, what have you. I find it to be a very meditative stone, and sometimes I end up, you know, just rocking it back and forth, staring at those mirror-like inclusions for a long time. This is often followed by a spark of inspiration. Apophyllite's a very mental stone, right? Uh, you can usually find tiny pieces at uh, metaphysical stores that you can keep in your pocket or something, and you can find slightly larger pieces sometimes, and I highly recommend getting a piece that has more than one point. Because that just, it adds a little bit more depth to what you can see in your apophyllite. I got a really nice chunk from my favorite psychic and medium. <laughs> her, her business is Allison Awakened. Highly recommend. If you live in Ontario anywhere, she does tour around with the psychic expo. So check that out. Um, but this is, this is one of my most used magical and psychic crystals. Because it works with your crown and your heart, I think it's especially great when you are connecting with spirits, you know, ancestors, family spirits, spirit guides, both yours and someone else's. So it's one that I highly recommend when you're doing any kind of work like that or any kind of magical or energetic healing. This last one that I'm going to mention is new for me. It's honey calcite, but I am obsessed with it. I adore it. And I've kept it at my desk or brought it with me whenever I'm working ever since I got it. It's a stone that helps with studying and learning new skills. It helps you complete complex tasks, especially like really long-term projects. Helps you stay focused in the long-term. Helps overcome procrastination and provides lots of clarity especially when it comes to power. This stone can let you know if you're crossing over into that power hungry money lover vibe and help you break that cycle. It helps me stay excited and interested in fun and happy. You might even say magical things. It helps me feel energized a little bit and not in the way of drinking a coffee, but it makes me feel emotionally energized. It gets me excited. It helps me sit down there and work. And before I know it, I have been sitting there reading or studying or working for hours and gotten so much done. I absolutely adore this honey calcite. Like I said, it's very new to me, but I love it. Sigils are another thing that I use all the time. Uh, 
I can design them digitally and then add them to a photo or a banner and just, you know, make it transparent or mostly transparent to attract people. I've even used it to try to encourage people to respect my personal privacy on like personal Facebook pages, a cover photo. I'll put a sigil on it, just make it transparent and attach meaning there. This can be really great if you're a psychic or anyone who's doing any reading with the public. You can draw sigils right onto your table with your finger in between clients, something they don't have to see. You can design sigils that help you keep you safe or help your clients heed your advice, or maybe it helps your clients leave feeling like they can heal themselves thanks to the, you know, information that you've given them, whatever. You can also use them to call in spirits or guides to help you or even help the client. You can work a sigil into your logo, your promotional items, make it a wallpaper on your phone or computer. I mean, the possibilities with sigils are endless. Put that on your business card before you encrust it in your wax. You know, draw a sigil to make your customers or your clients feel safe, feel protected. Draw a sigil to help them open up or to be forthcoming or to be truthful. All of that is a really, really great way to use sigils that are personal or you can find ones that are pre-made on the internet. Rose water. I mean, rose water is probably like my best friend right at this point. I use rose water every day in a million different ways. Uh, I use it to cleanse and clear my chakras. I'll put it on my hands and run it through my aura or my chakras. And I'll put some on a cotton pad and actually clean my third eye. And I also use it to introduce magical energy into the space. So rose is one of those very high and mighty, and that sounds rude, but it's a very high and a very mighty magical plant. Not only does it cleanse and clear, but it is also something that attracts and brings in magical energy. That's why you use it to attract love or success or anything. I'll spritz just straight up rose water. I have a little spray bottle around me above a table, uh, lightly on some crystals or decks as long as they won't get wrecked, right? And I'll add it to washes and sprays. I spray it on my hands when I feel like I am blocked, like my energy is not coming in or going out properly. Just cleanse those chakras. I'll use it to help me connect psychically to someone when I shake their hand, if you put it on your hands. You know, it's just this small connection, but it helps you it helps form a bridge for you to cross later. It's also very attractive, like I said, so I spray it during most prosperity or magic work that I do. You can also use roses. If you can get mini roses, you can have that growing on your desk. It has a variety of colors that you can use for different purposes. If you work in magic, try to get blue or purple lilac colored roses. Those are the colors of spirituality and magic. I also have little rituals, like I I use daily tarot draws to help me determine what to focus on at work or through magic each day. I look at the sign that the moon is in, the day of the week, and my personal horoscope as well. Uh, At the beginning of the month, I'll I'll read my monthly horoscope. Usually it's the one that Annabelle Gatt writes for broadly or vice. Um, And I'll just fill in little notes in my planner for the entire month. Stuff to just, you know, keep an eye on if it gives me any specific dates. I host live streams in my private group on Wednesdays. And Wednesday is a fun and quirky day that is very artistic, but it's associated with Mercury and communication. So it's very, very good with communicating my ideas, hearing other people's ideas while still having fun. I like to read tarot for others. For me, I'll do it every day, right? But I like to read tarot for others either on Mondays or on Saturdays. When it comes to Saturday, Saturday is ruled by Saturn, which is the planet associated with Capricorn, my sign. And to me, it has a very cosmic energy. Like I said, cosmic energy as an extension of earthy energy, very time and space type vibes. It's a stable type of energy, but to me, it is inherently magical. I don't know if everyone feels that way. Maybe it's just because I'm a Capricorn, or maybe it's because I'm very much into the whole Saturn- father time, hermit, (laughs) guide in the dark type vibe, right? I'm a hermit. That's true. (laughs) Mondays, on the other hand, are associated with the moon and with lunar energy and are therefore very, very psychic and very good for connecting on an emotional level. I honestly 
I have this theory that every single Monday is actually a liminal time slash space. Monday is a very odd day. It's a day where everyone is awake, but they're not awake. The week has started, but it also actually hasn't. It feels like the previous week hasn't ended yet. The energy is very strange. And that to me is a very magical day and a very good day to connect through psychic channels or astral channels or anything like that. When it comes to cleansing and clearing the magical items that I use for work purposes or any sort of psychic work specifically, I use mugwort. So some stones I'll stick right in the dirt in my mugwort plant for clearing because they are very earthy stones where that is a that is something that they enjoy, right? <laughs> Others I will waft through burning mugwort smoke. You can burn it just like you can sage in a bundle. I will use a freshly picked or live mugwort branch to sprinkle magical water on my altar space, you know, as a way of dispersing the water. And I even keep dried mugwort in a little, um, like a paper sachet that I created, and I put that into my tarot bags. I got the idea in Salem. I bought a small mugwort protection talisman that's made of paper. It's a little paper envelope, basically. And it fits perfectly in my tarot bag, so I started creating others with the mugwort that I grow. So cool. And it keeps your cards cleansed, but also infused with magical and psychic energy. Another place that I like to focus in my office space are my windows and doors. I keep the windows clean. I wash them with Florida water whenever I feel like it's needed. I hang crystals and stained glass pieces that invoke magic into the windows so that the light can come in. I keep witch bottles on the windowsills. And when I want to draw attention to my work, I will open up the windows, even if I'm not actually trying to attract anyone locally, but I'm trying to get that energy out. That's the idea, right? I have multiple wind chimes made of different materials and that make all different sounds. Um, I have a metal one with Tibetan bells that is stars and moons that is right near my desk. Another one that's made of shells and a window behind me that I can hear every time there's a soft breeze coming through there. And then I have two outside near my door again to keep that energy moving well going in and out. I also use green rice and I put it in door frames and thresholds on windowsills on the porch, throw it up on the roof of the house since this is my office space. Another thing I do is I create a magical poppet. I have a magical um, communication poppet. He's a little blue doll, right? And he's got communication stones and herbs inside that help me communicate my own feelings. They help me express myself. They help me tap into my throat chakra and they help keep me authentic. My own authenticity is very, very important to me. And what I've realized is that it's very important to all of you that listen to the show as well. I try to make sure that everything I say is authentic to what I believe, to what I do. I don't really talk about a lot of things that I don't do or haven't tried. (laughs) I, I try to make sure that it's all very real. And this little poppet has all of that energy inside and I will stick it into my pocket or hold it when I'm recording. He's actually sitting right up on top of my on the air sign right now. Finally, we have my books. So my witchy books, you guys might have noticed, are very tied to my business. (laughs) So I take some magical care of those as well. This is another place where I use mugwort smoke for cleansing. I will just, you know, just like you would with a sage bundle, go through my bookshelves with it. Um, And I also, I'm a little, I make sure that the books that are on my shelf in my section of books that I use all the time or that are to be featured here on the show, or that I use in my magic, I make sure that those are all in line with my beliefs and, for lack of a better term, with my brand. I will remove books that don't fit in with that. Or, you know, if I've given a book on the show a bad review, which doesn't happen a lot, I think I've only done it twice, those books are not on my bookshelf anywhere near the books that I regularly use. Even my beloved, you know, my, it's vintage now, but my vintage Silver Raven Wolf collection (laughs) is away from the books that I use all the time because the energy just doesn't blend together. I am such a nostalgic person. I love nostalgia. But when it comes to my witchcraft and my beliefs, I am pretty modern. 
And I try to make sure that my magic books that I use constantly reflect that and that that shelf reflects that. I don't know why I started doing that. And I don't know if other people do that as well, but that is something that I've been doing since I started reviewing the books and using them more. Now, this guide is, of course, not definitive, (laughs) but I really hope that it's a great start and that it inspires you to bring magic in your workspace, even if you have to keep it low key. Now, if you try any of this, or if you have your own witchy business rituals or witchy talismans that you use at work, do you have yourself a sacred office space? I would love to hear about it. And I'm sure other people listening would love to hear about that as well. When it comes to work like this, it's very personal. It depends on where you work. So some of you that work in other industries might use different tools that I haven't even thought of. If you want to share all of that, you can use the hashtag sacred office space and show that off. Show off pictures on Instagram of your desk or your office space and some of the magical items. You can use it on Twitter to kind of get my attention so that I can share the advice with others. And maybe this will help you find other ways that you can incorporate magic into your work life. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Fat Feminist Witch Podcast. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy this upcoming new moon in Virgo. It's a great time to put some of this prosperity type work into effect. If you want to learn more about money and about your value, you can check out episode 48. I also recommend checking out the Magical Fashionistas episode and Magical Fashionistas by Tess Whitehurst if you want to start dressing with intention at work. If you want to learn more about the days of the week and their magic, you can go to my website, thefatfeministwitch.com and look up the witchy weather report. And these are posts that I've made for every day of the week that tell you the general vibe, crystals, herbs, and colors and styles that are appropriate for each day and that help you harness the energy that's already around you every day of the week. If you want to find out more about me, you can hit up that website, thefatfeministwitch.com. You can find me all across social media by searching for my name. I am on Facebook, Twitter, Interest, and Pinterest. Interest and Pinterest. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. If you want to support the show financially, you can do that by going to my website and clicking the button that says buy me a coffee. You can also become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash the fat feminist witch. And there you can join my private monthly membership group. It's $10 a month. And you will get to join those Wednesday night live streams on our day of communication. And I post lots of different things in the group and uh, lots of different links and videos that I've created, all sorts of really fun stuff. You can also support the podcast by following, liking, reviewing, subscribing, all of that kind of stuff anywhere that you listen to podcasts. If you find that my podcast is not on your favorite podcast player, please feel free to send me an email at fatfeministwitch at gmail.com and I will do my best to get it added. As far as I know, it's across multiple platforms, uh, not just iTunes and Spotify and Podbean and Google Play, but Stitcher, CastBox. Podcoin, all sorts. So if it's not there, let me know. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you all have a fantabulous Virgo weekend. Thank you all for joining me. Be sure to tune in next week. We're starting into September, right? September 5th. Thursday, September 5th, I have a really fantastic interview all about ancestor veneration with Mallory Vaudoise, and you guys are not going to want to miss that. So I hope to see you guys or hear you guys or speak to you guys in September. Have a very magical weekend, everybody.